Hello, I'm Denton Slovercheck, Principal Application Development Manager for the power industry with Hawk Company. Hawk has developed a method for measuring film forming amines at very, very low levels so they can be detected as a residual in condensate down to levels as low as 20 parts per billion. The range of this test is 20 parts per billion up to 3 parts per million. However, to measure at the very, very low levels, technique is everything. And the purpose of this video is to show you the best technique for accurately measuring the film forming amines. The video will be demonstrated by our research chemist, Dr. Tanista Das, who has developed this method. In order to have the greatest accuracy, precision, and limit of detection, Hawk suggests that you obtain your sample in the 25 mil sample cell that you're actually going to run the test. This will help prevent cross-contamination in your test. The sample cell and the stopper must be rinsed at least five times before you actually obtain your final sample. It's also critical to make sure that the rubber stopper has no liquid in its cap and that is shaken out as any liquid will affect the final volume of the test. In situations where you're not able to actually use the sample cell and need to collect a larger sample, then it's very, very important that you consider the sample container as well as making sure it's rinsed. Use only polypropylene, polyethylene, or PTFE bottles. Do not use glass containers for obtaining this sample. The bottle and its cap must be thoroughly rinsed at least four times with the sample prior to collecting. Let's discuss the labware apparatus and reagents util utilized in this method. There are two reagents that are used for the test. One is film forming amine one, and the other is film forming amine two. However, there's also the very important, the isopropyl alcohol solution that is used to clean the sample cells between the tests. You also need a spectrophotometer. We recommend a DR6000 spectrophotometer from Hawk or the DR3900. In addition, you will need deionized water, chem wipes for cleaning the sample cell, and you'll, for dispensing the reagents, you will need two separate pipetters one for each reagent as cross-contamination can be a significant issue. Also, after each method, you will replace the pipette tips. Never reuse the same pipette tip twice, again, to prevent cross-contamination. Also important is a 25 mil sample cell. This sample cell is a typical Hawk square sample cell with a mark at 25 milliliters for the sample. Also included is a rubber stopper. It's very important to use this rubber stopper with each test. To perform the method, first we need to select the proper program on our DR6000 spectrophotometer. This is program number 795. To perform the test, first we need to rinse out the 25 mil sample cell with deionized water. Next, we're going to rinse out the sample cell twice with our sample. After your final rinse, it is very important to shake out all of the solution from the sample cell and the rubber cap to make sure you do not, again, have cross-contamination. Now we're ready to fill the sample cell with the sample. It's important to add the sample to the 25 mil mark as accurately as possible. At this point, the first thing we need to do is to zero the sample cell. Let's first make sure that you've cleaned the sample cell thoroughly with chem wipes to prevent any fingerprints or anything that may cause inaccurate readings. The sample cell should be placed 
in the spectral photometer if it's a DR6000 with the 25 mil mark facing you. On a DR3900, the 25 mil mark should be facing to the left. Now we'll zero the instrument. The next thing we're going to do is to add our film forming amine reagents. Your technique when pipetting is critical to the accuracy of the tests. So let's make sure we understand how the pipetter is used. The pipetter plunger has two stops. The first stop is for aspirating your sample or your reagent up into the pipette. The second stop is to go all the way when you are dispensing. It is important that the pipette tips be placed tightly onto the pipette in order to prevent any air going into the pipette that could cause air bubbles or inaccurate aspiration. First, we're going to pipette film forming amine one into the sample cell. Again, it is very critical to properly pipette. Have your pipette at one milliliter, accurately put it in and slowly depress the plunger, bringing up your solution very slowly, keeping it vertical, and then accurately transferring to the sample cell. Take your time and make sure all of the reagent is added. Next, we're going to add film forming amine number two. Again, it's very important to use separate pipettes for this method. Set this at one milliliter as well. Once the two reagents have been added, we will now add the rubber stopper and we will invert to mix. It is very important not to shake this sample, only invert this sample to mix the reagents. Invert this four times for the best mix. At this point, we will set our timer for two minutes as a waiting period to allow the color to fully develop. As Tanista puts the sample cell into the spectral photometer, it is very important to reiterate that this front, the 25 mil mark, is to face you toward the front on a DR6000. On a DR3900, it will face to the left. After pressing read, you will see the result of your method. As you can see, the reading is 0 0.335 milligrams per liter OLDA. However, if you're using a different type of film forming amine, for an example, ODA or OLA, then the instrument will actually give you the proper reading for those forms. First, go to options, then choose more, and then choose chemical form. You will now see that you can choose OLDA, ODA, or OLA as your form factor. If you're always going to be using one particular form, you can choose that and make that default so that every time you run your tests, you will be reading your value in the actual film forming amine that you are using. Once you have your reading, it is important to very quickly clean your sample cell. So take the sample cell, empty it from the sample, and rinse the sample cell three times with deionized water. It's very important now to start shaking. We only invert during the test, but in cleaning, it's important to shake vigorously.
After rinsing with deionized water, you now want to add isopropyl alcohol to the sample cell at about one-fourth of the volume of the sample cell with the isopropyl alcohol. Again, place on the stopper and shake vigorously. Discard the isopropyl alcohol and rinse again with deionized water a minimum of four times. If this cleaning procedure is not done correctly, then accurate results at the very low end will be very difficult to obtain. Hawks research has shown that the cleaning of the sample cell is one of the most critical aspects in getting a good, accurate result for this method. Once you have finished cleaning the sample cell, you can now use it again for the next test, or if you're going to be a time period between that, ensure that you store the sample cell and the stopper in a way that they do not become contaminated.